This is Pauli. She's been assisting me for the last six months on photo shoots and she's now about to plan her very first own photo shoot. She came to me a few weeks ago saying how nervous she was and mentioned that she wasn't sure if she could do it. I'm just afraid something might go wrong. For example, what if I lose the focus? In this video, I'm going to show you the mistakes she very nearly made and how to avoid them, so that you can go into your first photo shoot with confidence. So let's start. The most common mistake is not having a purpose during the shoot. And this does not mean that you have to wait with the photo shoot until a client requests you, but rather that you should have a clear purpose for the shoot. Do you want to work in advertising photography in the future? Then create a portfolio advertising a lipstick. It is very important to find a purpose for your shoot so that you don't waste time and energy into something that isn't really helping you in the long run. It often happens that people confuse the concept with the mood board but guys they are two different things but what exactly is a concept it is the central idea of your photo shoot having a strong concept is essential for creating a successful photo shoot concepts should include things such as mood pictures location wardrobe props composition and lighting you should develop a concept that will guide your photo shoot from start to finish today's shoot has the purpose of bringing Pauli more jobs and advertising photography in the future. She is in love with the world of jewelry advertising campaigns and thinks about starting a career in this field. So we built the idea around a jewelry campaign, elegant and minimalistic. For the concept, she imagined that these photos would be used for the brand's landing page. And because of the unique shape, we also want to photograph the jewelry in a creative way. Once you have a general idea of your concept, it is important to refine it and make it more specific. For this, you can create a mood board or sketch out your ideas. This will help you to visualize your concept and ensure that everyone involved in the shoot is on the same page. Add as much examples as you can find and remember that they can include paintings or themes from a film. Do not limit yourself in creating the idea. Another mistake that I often see is photographers contacting the team without a clear vision or a concept. Especially at the beginning of your career, it is important to create a concept first and then look for the right team. Because if you do not have a strong portfolio yet, you will not find an experienced team that is happy to work with you. There are several ways to find a good team. My advice for you is to try to find people with more experience than you. It will help you to achieve better results and you can learn from them. To find the best team for your concept, you can try to contact agencies, but don't be sad if they don't respond. And also social media is always a good idea. And this is Pauli's team for today. This is Wanda, Pauli's makeup artist. This is Veronika, the incredible model for today's shoot. And I'm also here as a mentor, assistant and supporter of Pauli. Pauli was very picky choosing the right team for this shoot. She had a clear vision in her mind. She wanted to have a model with beautiful bright eyes to shoot close-ups of the earrings next to her eyes. And she wanted to work with an experienced makeup artist. I'm glad we found these two and the shoot will be amazing. And the next thing I want to tell you is one of the most important when planning your first shoot. But wait, I want to share something with you. I worked very hard this year to give you access to my brand new Natasha Lindemann Plus website. It's an education platform for photographers, models and makeup artists. There is already a lot of free content in the blog and there will be more in the future. And with my exclusive newsletter, the Plus Letter, I share many secret insights, job offers, giveaways, limited editions, events and discount codes. And the best thing is that it's totally free to sign up and receive all of these goodies. So whether you are a photographer, model or makeup artist, you can now sign up and get the plus letter. The link is in the description. But please do it after watching this video because now I want to share the most important things when planning your first shoot. And it is a proper time schedule. How long do you need to shoot a look? How many looks fit in one shooting day? And how long does the makeup take? And it is not only important to know these details, to know how long you have to rent the studio 
and the equipment, but it is important so that you can be sure that you can create every motive that you have planned to shoot. So make a realistic schedule, don't forget to plan for breaks and meal times, and always plan for the worst case. Because if your schedule is planned too optimistically and you get behind the schedule, then it's not good for the result. I would always recommend to add 10 to 20 minutes to every single point so that you are definitely on schedule afterwards. If you don't know where to start with your time schedule, check out my previous video where I share some tips about time management. Pauli scheduled only one makeup look for her shoot and created a very generous schedule. And that's the reason why the team was very well on time and she managed to shoot every motive she wanted to create. So you see, organization is the key of success. It is impossible to keep everything in mind. And that's why the next step is to do a call sheet. But what exactly is a call sheet? that has all the essential information that each team member needs to know for the shooting day. This includes details about the location, arrival plans, parking spaces, phone numbers of the team, schedule, required props or special effects, weather information and any additional information you want to put in. We also always include the exact time to be at the location and the expected wrap time. And in our case, we also gave important information for the model because we didn't have a nail stylist and wanted her to arrive with a fresh manicure. And after all of the preparations, we can now finally start with the production. Coffee time and little briefing. Right now Pauli is going over the idea and her concept with the whole team so that she is sure all her ideas are clear and coffee is also always a good start into a working day. As you can see she has printed the mood boards, concepts and posing moods as I suggested her because this will help her not to get lost during the work and it will also be easier to explain to the model what she exactly needs. Often the first photo shoot goes wrong because the photographer loses control over things and time due to anxiety. All these tips will help you to be focused and trust me, make a list with all the things you need for the shoot. The next step for Pauli is to double check everything and to set up the lights. As she wanted to do poses with hands, she needs soft shadows. So we chose a soft box as a main light and a grazing light to separate the model better from the background. She also chose two white styros on the left and the right side and the reflector from underneath. She is using a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 70mm lens. Especially for the first photo shoot, it is important to test the light setup after setting it up. This helps to be prepared as soon as the model comes out of the makeup. Take the test photos with an assistant and adjust the light setup until you are 100% happy with it. At this point, I see very often that many people get impatient, but really take your time to set up the light setup properly. This will not only save you a lot of time in retouch, but you will also be much happier with the result. If this is your first shoot in the studio, then I always recommend setting up and testing the light setup a day before the shoot. This gives you much more security and you also have more time to try it out. Now that everything is set up, Pauli is also ready to start shooting. She starts first with portrait photos and I always recommend, especially for the first beauty shoot, to shoot in the sitting. This has the advantage for the photographer that you can lean on the table for the close-up shots and you have a more steady hand. But also for the model it has many advantages because she cannot move so easily out of the light and she has also a table for posing. As you can see Pauli is shooting tethered in the laptop. This is very important especially when shooting beauty and portraits. The makeup artist can see if they have to make any makeup adjustments and you can make sure your images are sharp and everything looks good this will save you a lot of time in post-production. As you can see here, Pauli is using some posing mood. I always suggest to prepare these because it's very helpful, especially when working with newcomer models. You can visualize poses that you think would fit your concept best and you can show them to your model to repeat them at the shoot. I already created many videos for beginner photographers, but if there's a topic you want me to cover, leave me a comment down below. 
And the last but not least step is to back up everything. Once you've completed the shoot, it is important to back up all your data as soon as possible. Do not wait until you get back home as it can be risky to carry around all of your images on a single device. I recommend to have multiple backups in different locations such as an external hard drive or a cloud storage. This will help you to avoid losing all of your hard work due to technical issues or accidents. And if you now want to know how to achieve the best results with a newcomer model, I would highly recommend you to watch this video.